Hi everyone, welcome to the Physician to Physician Forum. We are going to get started in just another minute or two. We do have some attendees that are still joining, so just bear with us for another minute. All right, thank you all so much for your patience. Uh, since uh, it's uh, five after eight on the East Coast, we are going to go ahead and get started. Uh, and I want to thank you for all joining and welcome you to the Physician to Physician Forum with Dr. Tina Venetos, who's a dermatologist in Lake Bluff, Illinois. My name is Shelley Olison, and I'm the National Sales Director for Modernizing Medicine. We'll start tonight's presentation with an overview of Dr. Venetos' experience with Emma Dermatology, and we'll follow with a question and answer session. Please write in your questions at any time during the webinar in the questions section of GoToWebinar. We will do our best to answer all questions. If for some reason we cannot get to all of them, we will follow up with answers after the broadcast. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Tina Venetos, who I worked with in the sales cycle back in 2011. Hi, my name is Dr. Tina Venetos, as Shelley just mentioned, and I am a uh, practicing dermatologist. Um, I am in private practice in one of the northern suburbs of Chicago. I um, have been practicing for almost 20 years, and I um, have a practice where I am the primary dermatologist, and then I have a uh, part-time physician's assistant, and I have an aesthetic nurse um, that also works in my office. And so um, back in about 2010, 2011, I started doing some research on possibly um, changing over from dictating charts um, to some kind of an EMR. Um, I'm not very computer savvy, um, very, you know, technologically archaic, although I am essentially, you know, not, not an old person, but I just don't have a lot of, you know, computer experience. And so um, the first time that I came across Emma was at a conference in February of 2011 at the South Beach Symposium. Um, what I loved the most um, about Emma at that time is that it was cloud-based um, in contrast to other systems that I had looked at. And um, the nice thing is that I do have three office locations. And so being cloud-based, um, the ease of portability um, so that if I'm in one office and a patient in a different office who's seeing my PA happens to have a question, I can just, you know, look it up and be able to answer the question. Um, so that was the one thing. The other thing, like I said, because I was not very computer savvy, um, working with the iPad um, has been phenomenal. Um, the fact that I, we can just touch um, on the screen um, and rather than doing any typing um, has been a great benefit. Um, the other thing about other EMR systems that I had looked at, um, I felt were co cost prohibitive because of um, having to pay for a server, having to have, you know, a computer um, technician, you know, if something goes wrong. Whereas with Emma, since, again, it's cloud-based, um, it's been phenomenal, um, and we have not had any issues like that. Um, in the beginning, um, you know, like I said, we were pretty archaic. We used... Uh, pencil and uh, an appointment book for appointments. So we um, incorporated Advanced MD as our practice management software. And that has linked in with Emma uh, beautifully. And so the other way that that is beneficial is with Emma, when the billing is done, since we're linked in with Advanced MD, and that's our practice management software, our billing is done immediately. And I'll discuss that in a little bit later. Um, in terms of you know you know how you know how do you go from you know paper charts and dictating to you know implementing you know something like you know an electronic health record system. So what we did um, you know back in 2011, uh, once a week um, I would have a training session with Emma, um, and it was a 12-week session. And then at the end of the 12 weeks, um, we started to incorporate Emma on a live basis with a handful of patients per day. And then we ended up in September of 2011 um, going completely live. Um, before, you know, Emma, I used to, um, you know, see anywhere from 40 to 50 patients a day. And at the end of the day, I would take home about 40 to 50 patient charts that I would have to then dictate. 
um, then the dictation, um, the scribe would end up, you know, you know, listening to the dictation, typing up the notes. The notes would then come back to the office either, you know, a few days later, and then I'd have to look them over and sign them. So the beauty, uh, you know, of Emma is when I see the patient, it, it eliminates that turnaround time. The patient note is done the minute I, you know, walk out of that room and the note is finished to my satisfaction and I press finalize. Um, it eliminates me, you know, having to do a few hours of work every night after I'm done seeing patients for the whole day. Um, it's eliminated transcription costs, and it's eliminated um, the turnaround time. And the other beautiful thing is that if I want to, you know, look something, if a few days later a patient would call and they had a question in the past, well, I don't, I didn't have their note back, so I wouldn't be able to know exactly what I prescribed or you know, maybe did I do a shave biopsy or what what I I had done. You know, I was basing it purely on my memory and, you know, which it tends to be good, but obviously having it right there um, by looking it up in Emma um, is very easy. And again, it's beneficial, especially with having multiple office locations for, for my practice. Um, a lot of times, like, you know, in the beginning, you know, again, being the newness of everything in terms of, you know, using iPads and, um, you know, having a laptop um, at like a, a nurse's station, um, you know, if we had any questions on training or support, um, everybody at Emma was always responsive. Um, there's a, a way that we can put in a ticket if we've got an issue and usually within 24 hours. We, I have either an answer or a resolution. Um, the other way that um, it has been beneficial is that, again, in the beginning, when we went from paper to incorporating something, you know, like an EMR, um, I had decreased the number of patients that I was seeing because of the newness of everything and in order, you know, to get used to doing everything. And I was pretty concerned because, you know, I maybe was seeing, you know, five to ten patients less per day. However, I noticed that my, um, the amount of my income had not changed. And when I looked further into that, um, the reasoning for that was that I always felt uncomfortable, like coding for a, a 99214 or generally for a new patient um, rather than doing 99203. If I saw somebody new and I did a complete skin exam, I would probably code for 99202 because I always wanted to make sure that I under, you know, I coded less, you know, I coded, a, I, I circled a code that was less than what I've actually done in case there was ever an audit. Um, I never wanted the possibility that, well, you, you charge for 99203, but you did not do 12, you know, uh, body parts. And so with Emma, because that does the billing for you, um, when you document what, you, what you've seen and what you've done, Emma does the billing. And so my billing collections went up subsequently. And so even though I was seeing less patients, um, you know, during that time, that transition time, um, the billing income was greater. And so that's another thing to take into consideration. Um, you know, speaking about the billing, um, the nice thing is that I don't have to, I don't have to think about it. I don't have to think, okay, I, I checked, you know, these many body parts. And, you know, I did a, you know, moderate com complexity assessment and plan. Emma does that for you. Um, other thing, other thing that, other things that, to keep in mind is that although I was mostly um, dictating, so my notes were typed, um, I know that a lot of doctors, you know, that still do handwrite some of their notes, um, you know, they're not legible. And so this was, you know, easy to learn. Um, for somebody who was not very tech savvy, um, like myself, I went from a completely paper system to completely computerized. I, really thinking back now, I just can't even imagine doing that any longer. Um, the idea that when I'm in an exam room, um, my support staff, like my MAs, they actually um, check the patient in by doing the HPI, and they do the review of systems, and they do everything that's required for meaningful use. And um, then I document the physical exam. And then I um, 
dictate, like, you know, the, uh, you know, in terms of, I shouldn't say dictate, but I pick the assessment and plan. And that's just by touch, touch screen. I'm not typing anything. Um, there's um, certain plans um, that have been formulated into the system um, that cater to the things that I like to say and do to patient, with patients. And I use my medical assistants to document, like I said, all, all the things like the HPI, and that just has increased the flow of my practice um, tremendously. Again, in the beginning, we had to take a little step backwards um, and decrease the number of patients. However, like I said, my, my income didn't drop because, you know, instead of, you know, coding less, um, Emma was coding appropriately. Um, the other way um, that I love, the other thing that I love is um, Pocket Emma, and that is an app that I have on my phone. And so um, on, a, on a weekend, you know, if I get a phone call and there, a patient has a question or um, a prescription refill comes in and it, it happens to be that I'm not in the office, I can just, you know, go onto my phone, look up the patient's name and, you know, look up the patient and um, be able to have it at my fingertips um, no matter where I'm at. I could be at, out of the country. I could be out of town. I could be in my office and don't have my iPad with me and I've got my phone on me and somebody has a question and I can just um, use Pocket Emma um, to look up anything that um, I'd like. Um, I can answer, you know, path results from that if, if the patient is curious about their path result and they hadn't gotten a phone call. Um, the other thing is that, you know, we talked about, I talked about a little bit about the billing and how Emma has helped in terms of um, billing, but especially now with the ICD-10 transition, for my practice, it has been a no-brainer. Um, it has been smooth, um, a, a transition that we don't even have to think about it. Emma takes care of everything. Everything's coded appropriately. Like I said, we use um, Advanced MD, and so we're linked with them. And so my billing, we have just not even lost a beat. Um, so that has um, helped tremendously because Emma is coding for you, and it's been flawless. Um, with meaningful use, um, you know, it was just in the beginning, you know, very overwhelming, not knowing, you know, okay, what does this mean? What do I have to do? Um, what is all this? Um, with Emma, um, we use a support um, staff person um, who has been tremendous. Um, there's somebody in my office um, who um, deals with meaningful use, and so she's the contact person um, that talks with um, somebody from Emma on a monthly basis, and um, we're told, okay, um, you're, you've done this, you've done this, um, you're still missing this, um, you need to do this, and so we are... Um, walk through all of the requirements and what we're what we are missing and what we still need to do um i don't think i could do that without the assistance of emma um other things um that you know have, that have happened that have been um beneficial um we actually were part of the beta testing for the derm pass module and um another feature that is excellent so emma's constantly you know improving um taking suggestions as to, you know, how things can be better um, for all of the Emma users. So with the DermPath module, when um, we use that module um, and we process a specimen and we have a lab in-house, because um, I'm not sure, you know, I'm talking to everybody all over the country, but in the state of Illinois, as of January 1st in 2015, the law changed where we could no longer bill for pathology unless we had a, a lab in-house. So we implemented, you know, we had a, a lab built out, and so we now do the path in-house. And so when that specimen is processed, it's entered into the system, and the pathologist that reads the slides um, goes ahead, just like we do with using an iPad, can pretty much like touch, um, there's um, like pre-text, um, you know, like everything that's written in, you know, like I, the, the pathologist did an H and E and da da da. That's all there. So it's by touching, and then a uh, actual pathology report is generated, and it's actually incorporated into the patient's chart. So then next time that that patient's um, name is pulled up, and you incorporate the pathology 
um, into the patient's note. So when they come in and it'll say you know, a shape biopsy was performed and the pathologic diagnosis was, you know, basal cell carcinoma, for example. And so that's part of the patient's HPI. If you actually want to look at the pathology report, you can actually um, go in and look at that as an attachment. So you can see exactly what the pathologist described. But in a quicker and simpler fashion, it's incorporated into the patient's notes. Um, what, I love, what I love the most about Emma is um, the fact that it's cloud-based, um, it's portability, um, meaning that you know, we can go from office to office or with pocket Emma. I can you know, look at any patient's um, chart no matter where I'm at. I love the fact that um, it has increased uh, my production by doing the billing for me. Uh, the idea that with ICD-10, I think a lot of people were nervous about that transition. For us, it's been flawless. And it's just, it's made my life a lot easier. I don't have to take, you know, 40 charts at home every night. Um, when I'm done at the end of the day, my notes have been finalized and I'm done. So. Um, that's what I love. Excellent. Dr. Venetos, I want to thank you so much for, for sharing that. Uh, it certainly sounds like you've had a lot of benefits, and it's so fun for me to hear you share this four years after you worked with me in the sales process and decided to move forward, because I know that it was a big leap of faith, especially coming from an all-paper practice, including a paper scheduler. So you, you came a long way, and it sounds like you've really mastered it and, and benefited from it. And so um, I, oh, go ahead. <laughs> um, I just, like you said, I think that um, from being on a, you know, completely not computerized and being paperless, um, you know, go, going from that to being um, paperless is pretty phenomenal. I absolutely agree. So uh, right now we are going to enter the uh, Q&A portion of tonight's webcast. And I know that this is what all of the attendees are the most excited about because you know, just like you worked with me in the sales process and, and uh, you know, a salesperson can only know so much since we don't actually use it to see real patients. So I know that uh, the people in the audience are eager to have you respond to their questions. So I, I already have one in here and I see some more coming in. So uh, people in the audience, if you will go ahead and type your questions into the question section of the GoToWebinar control panel, um, then I can ask them to Dr. Venetos. But uh, let's go ahead and start with the first one. Uh, one doctor would like to know more about how your practice management system is integrated with Emma. So there was a bridge um, in order to link Emma uh, with Advanced MD. Um, and you know, for us, we use Advanced MD. Other, there's, uh, there are other companies um, that are practice management software companies um, that do work with Emma. I'm not quite sure, you know, the names of them, but I'm sure that um, if you ask somebody at Emma, um, you know, or if you already had a practice management system, um, there would be some kind of a bridge um, that would link the two together. And so, Dr. Venados, I think uh, he may be asking, um, you know, what what pieces of information go from the practice management to Emma, and what pieces of information go from Emma to the practice management? Okay, um, so the patient's demographics um, uh, can go, from, go back and forth. Um, nothing that's medical, like nothing through, from Emma um, that is like a patient's note or um, their medications, um, that does not go back and forth between Emma and the practice management software. So it's mostly demographics, um, you know, their race, their ethnicity, um, you know, things that we need for meaningful use, uh, whether they're smokers, um, that, that goes back and forth. And, and just to clarify, actually, I, I, wanna, I do want to make a slight co uh, correction. So the patient demographics and insurance come one way from the practice management system, and then when the note is finalized in EMMA, it triggers all of the ICD, CPTs, and modifiers to go back to the practice management. And so it works that way for Advanced MD and all of our partners. Um, and years ago, when Dr. Venetos first signed up, you couldn't get that sort of an interface 
uh, you know, with anything other than our partners. But now we have custom interfaces that do cost a little bit more than going with one of our partners, but we can do that same sort of an interface with pretty much any system out there. Uh, and then with some systems, we can also do a scheduling interface now uh, where, you know, if you are part of a practice that maybe has 20 providers and tens of thousands of patients and you're worried that, you know, you might accidentally document on the wrong John Smith, um, then we can do a scheduling interface that allows you to just have your patients show up in Emma and then you just click one button to create the visit so that you always know that you're documenting on the right patient. Uh, but that does require a work order and we would have to um, confirm that before committing. But it is a recent enhancement that we've done to the interfaces. Um, so we have another question here. And the question is, is it easier to complete a note on a PC or Mac versus an iPad? Uh, for me, no. Um, I use my iPad, mm, I would tell you, 99% of the time. Um, the, re the reason I use my um, PC um, is so that I can um, finalize um, pathology, uh, but in terms of doing notes, 99% uh, on my iPad. I actually Great. have a special, I actually have a special um, handle, um, like a case um, that holds my I iPad, and then there's a handle, so I slip my hand inside of it. I literally... Uh, don't take it off my hand for the whole day. You must have a very strong hand. I know when I go to society meetings, my arm gets a little tired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, it, you know how people say glued to the hip? Well, it's glued to my hand. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Okay, great. We've got another question here. Uh, do path reports come into Emma from most labs without a special bridge, or do you scan them in? Well, we actually, um, because we are part of the, um, so well, two things. Well, first, um, before being part of the beta testing, um, our the lab that we used prior to January 1st, um, before the law changed in the state of Illinois, um, our, the lab that we used for pathology um, was, um, um, had a bridge with Emma. And so we did not have to scan um, it was actually downloaded into the computer um, directly from the pathology. Perfect. Thank you, Dr. Venetos. And then just to follow on that, um, we have interfaces with dozens and dozens of path labs out there. Uh, and, and we do charge the path lab for the interface. But once they've built the interface, uh, it costs very little to add additional practices to it. We never charge the practice. Uh, and if you're curious to know if your path lab is already integrated with Emma, you can go to our website, modmed.com, and then go forward slash partners, forward slash pathology, and you'll see a long, long list of partners. Uh, if you don't see yours there, you can also click on the link to suggest that uh, we reach out to your path lab to discuss interfacing with them. Uh, we have another question here, and uh, they'd like to know if you ever use voice recognition with Emma. Um, minimally. You can. Um, I just don't. Um, again, um, just being able to touch, um, to me, I just don't feel that there's a need to do the voice recognition. Great. And that says a lot, meaning that you used to dictate everything. So that says a lot. Yes. <laughs> I, I tried to touch the iPad rather than do any typing or doing any kind of uh, voice. Um, so for that reason, I don't really use the voice recognition. Okay, great. It's really interesting that uh, it's been such a big, a big change for you, but that's exciting to hear. Um, the next question is, what has been the typical response time for support and training? Um, you know, for training, um, like I said, we had a, a schedule where every week um, we would um, learn a specific area of Emma. And so for me, the training took 12 weeks. Um, I, it was fine. I mean, it wasn't like I was in a rush that I wanted to, you know, learn everything in a week. Um, I think that, you know, there's, there is a learning curve. And so I was happy that it was spread out. I think, you know, you know, for some people, if they want to do it all in one week, I believe that's a possibility. Uh, another um, area that was very helpful is for the first time last year, there was emanation. Um, I paid for my whole staff um, to come to emanate, to go to emanation, and um, there 
we had a list of like different little questions you know, like if, if we had something would come up, we, we had made a list and we, when we went to emanation, all our answer, all our questions were answered. And if they couldn't answer them there, um, they opened up a ticket and, you know, within 24 to 72 hours, we had some kind of an answer. Great. Perfect. Um, so I do see uh, another question here. And they'd like to know, do you use full service advanced MD or do you have a biller that helps you? I think they're, they're asking, do you bill in-house or do you use a service? Um, I do not bill in-house. Um, I do use a very small um, uh, billing company and, um, you know, rather than a huge billing company, which is what I used to have in the past. Um, so she works with advanced MD. It is full service. And... Um, so she's in, you know, she's incorporated as well. So um, everything goes through her um, to Advanced MD, and then, then the billing goes out. Perfect. Thank you. And um, we do offer revenue cycle management services here at Modernizing Medicine. Uh, we acquired our very first company uh, last December, Ascentix, which specialized in dermatology billing. So if you are interested in billing, uh, we use Cario as RPM, but we support it, we train on it, and we do revenue cycle management. So if you're looking for that and you'd like just one vendor, um, that's the best way is to, to do revenue cycle management with us. We also include an inventory management system, and the only way to use that actually is to do revenue cycle management with us. So something good to know. Of course, you're welcome to use any practice management and any billing service. Uh, but since you asked about that, I thought I would mention that. Uh, we do have another question here um, that asks, what redundancies are built into the system to minimize computer downtime? So I don't know if you know the answer, that, uh, Dr. Venados, but you're welcome to, uh, to answer that. Um, I, don't know, I don't know the question about the redundancy. Um, however, what I can tell you is that um, only in the very beginning, so back in like maybe 2011 or 2012, um, there were a handful of times that maybe for a period of an hour or so, or maybe a little bit longer, um, we could not use Emma. Um, there was, a, I guess, a problem with uh, the location where Emma uh, stores everything. Um, and again, this was a number of years ago. Um, right now, I mean, we um, have never had an issue where the there's any downtime of the computer because it's cloud-based. Perfect. And you're absolutely right. Way, way back then, I think it was late 2011, something like that, we were using a company called Liquid Web, which we thought was the best at the time. Uh, but you're right, we started having some issues, and uh, I'm sure all doctors on here will agree that when you have patients waiting to see you, you don't have tolerance for downtime. So we switched over to Amazon Web Services, and we actually have your data in triplicate. So we have three data centers. The primary one that we host from is Virginia. Then we have another one in Northern California and a third in Oregon. So as we're hosting from Virginia, we're mirroring in two additional locations. We have um, engineers, uh, service quality engineers, that monitor 24-7 to see if there's any latency, anything going down, or any hackers, right, that are trying. Uh, to breach. Uh, so we did have one hack attempt, which was kind of funny for us because we caught it before they even went through the first layer. So that was interesting. That was a couple of years ago. Um, we have had different servers go down, but the really nice thing is that since we have these engineers watching 24-7, they can instantly uh, flip a switch, start hosting now from your second mirrored location while still mirroring at the third, right? So there's absolutely no chance of ever losing any data. So practices don't even realize when their primary servers go down, we flip it to the middle one, we repair the primary, and then once the primary is repaired, we go back, and the whole time we've been mirroring at a third location. So that's why you can really, really count on Emma. I haven't gotten a statistic for 2015, uh, but when we did our, our annual all-hands meeting, we learned that in 2014, we had a total of 5.26 minutes of unplanned downtime in the entire year. 
Um, so I, I thought that was uh, pretty impressive, and it's great to hear that you've never experienced that in the last few years, Dr. Benedos. That is correct. Um, so, uh, so I have another question here, and um, the question is, is there a delay in pulling up previous visit notes on the iPad, or do you print them out prior to seeing a patient? Oh, no. Like I said, we went from completely archaic to using a pencil and an appointment book to make appointments, um, paper charts, and right now we, we're in essence paperless. So we would never print a, a, a note because it's right there. Um, so when you go into the um, HPI, which, you know, to, to formulate a new note, which again, I'm not the one that um, starts the new note. Usually my medical assistant is. Um, so when the medical assistant goes into the room and, you know, sees a patient um, who's a follow-up patient um, for acne, so they go into Emma and they press on, you know, new office visit, and then there's a tab that says follow-ups. So they'll, they'll press on follow-ups, and then any of their follow-up diagnoses, I'm sorry, any of their diagnoses previously come up. And so say for her it would be acne. So you press on acne, and then in the HPI it says, you know, the patient is, you know, a 27-year-old female um, who has hormonal acne, was last seen on, you know, October 8th and um, is here for a follow-up visit. She has been using da-da-da. Um, and then you can just tap, you know, um, she's improved or she um, stopped using the medications because of dryness. But there's certain um, other things that prompt you. And then the HPI is formulated. Perfect. Great. You know, something else that I'm curious to know if you ever use, and, and by the way, I agree with you. I love those follow-up chief complaints. I think they're one of the coolest things in the program, and they've been there for years. Um, I'm curious to know, do you ever use the outcomes tracking where you can kind of watch and, and track a disease, almost like a stock, um, and then you yes. can kind of look at the visit notes like that? Yes. Now, the way, the way to do that is um, another, you know, thing that you can do is um, when you're doing the assessment and plan, so say, that, say this acne patient, for example, under the assessment and plan, um, there are other tabs. Um, there's a tab for, you know, morphology, um, I believe, um, I don't know if it says uh, improvement. I think it's a body or, surface area covered and physician global assessment. No, um, this is in the under, like, the acne tab. I can actually... Um, actually, as we speak, I can go into Emma, and I can tell you exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so um, you can actually say, you know, worsened, improving, resolving, um, cleared, um, and so that, so that that would show up on the next, you know, in the next note, and that actually um, helps with the outcome. So cool. when you want to look at that outcome tab. Awesome. I never actually tried doing it that way. So I just learned something from you, Dr. Benedis. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, and I'm going to go into the note, and I'm going to tell you um, exactly what I'm talking about. So um, when you're in the patient's note, um, there's uh, on the side, it says morphology, DDX, associated diagnosis, status, or new DX. So um, if you want to say that this is a new diagnosis because that affects your billing, you just tab on the new DX. Um, I was talking about status. That was the word that uh, was blanking in my head. So when we go into that, the note, we always try to put in the status, whether the patient's worsening. You know, if, if they're here for acne and they're on topicals, we want to document that if we're going to put them on an oral antibiotic, it's because they're not improved or they're worsening. And so we do it that way, and then, there, then that actually helps with the outcomes chart. Cool. Awesome. I'm going to have to give that a try. And so for those of you who have not looked at our outcomes, uh, certainly feel free to, to speak with your regional sales manager about a personal demo about that. You can also go on uh, our website onto the Emma Dermatology page and you can see how you can really track diagnoses almost like a stock so that instead of flipping, you know, maybe the last two or three visits and seeing how they're doing, you just have this really clear visual to see how they're responding to therapy, and then down below that, it shows the therapies that you're using. So it's it's a kind of a, a, a different way to look at how patients are responding to treatment. So it's cool to know that you're using that. Yes, absolutely. Um, 
Yeah. So another question here. Can two different medical assistants, or perhaps you and a medical assistant, be entering data on the same patient at the same time using different iPads or maybe an iPad and a computer? Yes. Cool. Awesome. All right, that, that was easy. That, yeah, that, that you can do, definitely do that. Um, you just have to save the note. So at the end of, you know, say one medical assistant is trying to get the patient ready for a biopsy, and they've gone in and they're taking consent, and the other medical assistant um, is finishing off documenting that patient's acne visit or eczema visit or psoriasis visit. Um, two can be working independently of each other. Excellent. Okay, cool. Um, and that actually makes me think uh, of another question. Nobody put this in here. But I'm curious, because I know that you see a decent number of patients per day. I'm curious to know how many medical assistants you work with and, and what a typical number of patients you see. Um, I um, am back up to probably seeing anywhere into the high 40s to like mid 50s per day. And um, I have um, two to three medical assistants that work with me. Okay, excellent. Thank you. I know that that's something that a lot of people wonder about, you know, whether they think that they're going to need to staff up. And, you know, I, I know in your situation, you were doing dictation. So there was the dictation cost that you got to eliminate. You added Emma. You know, and I'm just curious, did you keep a similar number of medical assistants or did you have to add any? Um, you know, if you take into consideration not just the cost of the dictation, but if you take into consideration my time, um, I literally would spend anywhere from, you know, two to four hours um, after I would see patients for the whole day. And so, to me, that is a lot more um, substantial than the cost of, you know, an extra medical assistant. Um, we went from... Uh, Two to you know you having two to having three. Okay. So that's very helpful. And I see somebody here uh, has their hand raised. Uh, and I was just about to chat. If you have, if you know how to raise your hand, you want to just look a little lower in the screen to where there's a tab called questions. And if you click on that tab, and you can type a question in here that I can. Uh, put forth to, uh, to Dr. Venetos to answer. So please uh, look a little lower on your screen, click on questions, and then we're happy to uh, relay that to her. Um, okay, so thank you so much for answering that question about your MAs and, and the time that you're saving and et cetera. Um, so another question back to PM, what practice management partners does Emma work with the most and which practice management systems have proved easiest to integrate with? I'm sorry, I didn't catch the last part of that. And which of them is the easiest to bridge with? Well, I've only worked with, you know, Emma and Advanced MD. So that, that would only be my only experience. Again, we went from being completely um, on paper um, to starting with Advanced MD and Emma. And you felt that the bridge is, is solid. So. I will, I will add to that and say that Advanced MD has more mutual customers with us than any of our other partners. Um, and they, I agree, they're a great company to work with, nice people, and they have a good product. Um, we have a ton of mutual customers with Kareo as well, K-A-R-E-O. Uh, I would say that they are the second most uh, common system that people go with. Uh, Kario is the least expensive option, so practices that are in the one to, provi one to five provider size, we typically say, you know, look at Kario. If it meets your needs at that price point, you know, that's a huge win for you. If you need to step it up a little bit more and you need some more in-depth reporting, maybe a little bit more feature functionality, then take a look at Advanced MD. For practices that are very, very large, I typically recommend that they compare between perhaps Advanced MD and Advanced Data Systems Corporation's Medix Premier product. That one can handle the largest practice. They even have hospitals using their system with thousands of, of doctors um, on there. So, um, you know, we have other partners that people go with, and, and they're certainly good. Uh, but I would say that 
Uh, those are the ones that people look at most frequently. It's just as easy for us to integrate with any of our partners. There's really no, no challenges with the interfaces. Um, so, you know, from a bridging perspective, they're all solid, and I wouldn't worry about that piece. Uh, it's just a matter of finding, uh, you know, really what you're looking for in a, in a product. Um, so, uh, let's see. Another question in here, and I think you, I think you talked about it a little bit already. But what is the, what was the transition like to ICD-10? Did you do any preparation for it, and was there any disruption to your practice? None, none whatsoever. Um, I, it was completely seamless. Great. It's as easy as it gets. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I, I still know the old, you know, um, you know, ICD-9 codes. I, you know, I don't know the ICD-10 codes, but I don't feel that I need to. I mean, it's just, um, it's been the easiest transition ever. Wonderful. Okay, great. Um, uh, I think we have maybe just one or two more questions trickling in here. Um, so... The next question is, how long did it take you to get Emma implemented? I know that you said when you implemented all those years ago, we had you just do one class a week and it, it lasted a long time, whereas now we, we do it in a shorter uh, time frame. But back then, how long did it take you to get implemented and was there a decrease in productivity? Which I do think that you've kind of touched on already. Yes. So, um, you know, like I said, so we um, did one class, one hour per week. For 12 weeks and then we um, picked a handful of patients you know like easier patients um, somebody young who's not on any medications um, who you know was coming in for acne and so we picked you know rather than the you know 75 year old patient who's got you know a list of 10 medications that you have to you know reconcile and put into Emma so we tried to keep it simple and use a handful of patients per day um, in Emma while at the same time, um, what we were doing, because we had a paper chart, um, we would print out the Emma note and put it in the pa patient's paper chart. And so what we did, um, you know, after the three months of the training and um, probably about, um, let's see, uh, about, I don't know, I'd say four to six weeks of doing like a handful of charts, um, Pretty much around like the third week of September in 2011, we went live. So everybody was in Emma, and every patient had to be checked in through Emma. And um, yes, I feel that I needed to decrease the number of patients I was seeing per day. Um, however, now I'm back up to that number. And like I said earlier, back then I, I thought, oh gosh, you know, I'm not, I'm seeing you know anywhere from five to ten patients less per day but my income did not drop because Emma was coding appropriately. And so now, obviously, my income has increased So um, because I'm back to seeing the same number of patients and everybody's being coded properly. Awesome. Great. Well, Dr. Venetis, I think that was the, the very last question. So I want to thank you again so much for joining us tonight. I'm so delighted to hear that this has been such a positive in your life. And we just can't thank you enough for sharing your experience with Emma Dermatology, and uh, I'll conclude tonight's broadcast, and thank everyone for logging in. We look forward to working with you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Take care, Dr. Benatos. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now.